You've asked and we delivered all the full frame Nikon wide lens lenses on the table. We'll go on this Nikon ZF because you know what? It's a perfect match. It really is. We have so much choice now if we're using manual focus lenses on this Z camera. Not only do we have all of the gorgeous Nikon manual focus F-mount glass, but without an adapter, we also have native Z lenses made by Voigtlander from 15mm all the way up to the 65 F2. And you know what? They're not just fashion statement. I know they look fabulous, but they also perform really, really well on this camera. So we're going to put the lenses on, try them out, tell you what we think about them, and also point you into the right reviews for the right lenses. Let's do it. Let's start with the 15 millimeter f4.5. This is your short and stubby wide angle prime. Yes, Nikon doesn't make anything like this. So they have 14 to 24, which is fairly large, 14 to 30, which is medium size, but larger than this. But if you want a nice prime, which is manual focus, and let's be honest, focusing on wide angle side of things, the depth field is quite large. Mm -hmm. So it is fairly, fairly easy. Now, in terms of optical performance, the lens is very sharp stop down. So anything from a fade is basically you get the sharpness across the frame. And we reviewed this lens in the Hammersmith back in the day. So definitely check that video out over here. Ding. Now let's talk about 35 Apo. It's F2 lens and Apo means apochromatic, which means in layman terms, it is very, very sharp. Mm. It's got all the latest coatings, all the sharpness that you can get. So a lot of people say that probably one of the sharper 35s available for that mount natively. So one of those lenses, you can't go wrong with it. Even wide open F2 is very, very sharp. We reviewed this lens back last summer at Standen House, and you can check out the full review in the description. We will include it for you. But if 35mm is your focal length, then honestly, you can't really go wrong with this one. Indeed. All right, now on to 40. This 40 millimeter is f1.2, which will give you very nice shallow depth of field. And we reviewed this lens in the English countryside in snow. That's right. The colors just pop from this lens and honestly made me fall in love with the 40 mil focal length. When I look at this lens, I just want to do this and speak Italian. Magnifico. <laughs> This lens has two characters, wide open from 1.2 to 2.8. It will give you this beautiful vintage rendering with all the swirls and a little bit of borrow distortion where it brings the subject to the middle and adds a bit of vignetting on the sides. And then stop down from about f4 to f11, you get a modern rendering where everything's sharp. You don't have that much character anymore. It just performs like a normal lens. So overall, if you like to have two in one, like shampoo and conditioner, mm -hmm. that is the lens to guess. And also have a look at the size of it. It's actually a really nice size for the lens and really, really portable. Can't say this about the next lens that we're about to show you, which is 50 millimeter F1. All right. The 50 F1 Nocturne lens is honestly magical. It is chunky and there's no denying that on the ZF, it's, it's not unbalanced, but there is a lot going on at the front of this yeah, camera. <laughs> definitely, big chungus. And you know what? This lens is magical. The images I can produce at F1 are fantastic. We actually reviewed it at London Borough Market, where we used it for a bit of portrait as well as street photography. And surprisingly, we used it on Z6, and focusing on Z6 was a little bit more difficult than with Nikon ZF. You know why? Because ZF now has face recognition either for people or animal or cars for manual focus lenses which means when you take a portrait of the person with that feature enabled then you'll have a box around the eye which means you can press ok to zoom in to 100 percent fine-tune your focusing if you need to and then take a shot it significantly speeds up the process and for lens like this this is essential so if you're looking at nikon camera for very shallow depth field lens just like this one nikon zf is currently the best camera to date 
We have weighed it and it is 1.4 kilos almost. So it's not a light setup if you are walking around on the street and you want something small. Yes. However, the Nikon Z 50mm 1.2 S lens, which is a fabulous lens, is heavier than this. It's 1.1 kilo on its own. And with this camera, it's going to be almost 1.8 kilos. It's also bigger, but we'll have to focus. So overall, comparing to those things, this is actually a small and light setup. <laughs> if you say so. Relatively. <laughs> and yes, coming back to the image quality and the rendering, it's one of the most beautiful lenses I've used. It's just the colors look very neutral, very smooth. There's very nice gradation going on between this. So overall, we're going to put the images for you to look at. I'm really, really pleased. 50 f1 and 41.2 are my favorite lenses mm -hmm. from Voidland lineup. Agreed. Now we have the 50 f2 APO lens, which does look a little odd on the ZF in just that it's so long. This is the hood part of it. But whereas the other lenses tend to be a little thicker on the barrel, this one is a short and narrow lens. It's in terms of length, almost the size of 51.8. Mm. However, they do have very different rendering. 51.8 has a Nikon rendering that we're kind of used to. Yeah. Now, because it's upper and it's, again, it's a very, very sharp lens with all the multi-layered coatings and basically this lens doesn't really have any aberrations or artifacts that it produced. In my opinion, the rendering that this lens produces, it almost has this modern rendering, however, the 3D pop you get with this is incredible. The bokeh is almost looks like you put a piece of glass behind the subject you focus on. Mm. And I talked about this in the review, the one we did back in the day in Brighton, That's right. where it was nice and sunny. And again, I really like this lens. I actually enjoyed it over 35 Apple, personally, mm. just because of that special rendering. Does it compare to 50 F1? No, they're very different lenses. So the advice there is, if you're looking for modern rendering, definitely get this lens. This is just sharpest lens from F2 all the way up down you can get. But F1, it's a character lens. So if you like character, go for 50 F1 or 41 2. If you like modern rendering, 50 F2 is fantastic. Great. And lastly, we have the glorious 65 F2 macro APO lens. This is an incredibly sharp macro lens with one to two reproductions. So subjects will be projected half life-size onto the sensor. It has a very, very long focus throw, which as you can see, extends the lens out quite a lot. And again, it is quite heavy. So this is the kind of lens that you would put on a tripod if you're doing slow moving or static macro subjects, not necessarily a lens that you would use for fast moving or flying objects like UFOs. Speaking of UFOs, <laughs> It's absolutely great for portraiture as well because it produces a shallow depth of field. So if you have an aliens to photograph, this would be a perfect lens for it. The closest focusing distance isn't quite as close on this one as it is with the Nikon Z macro lenses. The 50mm is the obvious comparison with this one and is smaller and lighter and does give you one-to-one -one reproduction and also has autofocus but the 65 is sharper and I think doubles up as a portrait lens slightly better because of that. Fantastic. Now that we've seen all full frame Voigtlander lenses for Nikon Z mount, let's talk about why would you choose Voigtlander over native Nikon Z mount lenses? Indeed. Now, Fuchtlander lenses, as it's supposed to be pronounced, yeah. do not overlap any of the available Z mounts in terms of focal length versus aperture. So we don't have a Z35 F2, for example. We don't have a 50 F2. There are similarities, but none of them directly overlap the Nikon Z range. So if Fuchtlander offers something special or in particular that you're looking for, obviously they're the first choice. They offer something different. And first of all, it's the look. Mm. And I'm not talking about the actual physical look because they do look beautiful and they fit nicely on Nikon ZF because of the retro style and those beautiful scallop rings, which are similar to Nikon pre-AI lenses, but also the rendering and the look they give you in the images that they produce. Some of them produce a modern look, which is not a Nikon one. Mm -hmm. Some of them produce a vintage character look with a lot of swirl and borrow distortion and thing, a bit of vignette and things like this. But for certain subjects, it actually works really well. In a world of photography where a lot of modern lenses are quite sterile, it's always nice to have new lenses that actually 
produced in this day and age, but that produced this kind of vintage character and look, while having all the coatings mm. that's unnecessary for all the digital cameras. So there is that as well. All of them are incredibly well made with full metal construction, the electronic contacts in the back, which then talk to the Z cameras, whether you've got a ZF or another Z camera. And they do stand heads above other third party manufacturers in terms of build quality as well. Now, don't forget that all Voidal lenses have an actual aperture ring, which is clickable and is not a ring that just moves smoothly and you have to assign it to change the aperture ring. No, this is actually there. And on a retro camera like Nikon ZF, as well as all more than other Nikon cameras, you can control your aperture via the aperture ring. You know, the good old fashioned style that we all love. I would say that the Fortlander lenses are not for everyone. If you don't like the look that they produce, if you want a very clinical and reliable look from your lenses, then the Nikon Z lenses are the ones to go for. If you like the character, the sort of special je ne sais quoi, then these lenses are what's going to provide it for you. But again, not for everyone. Not everyone likes manual focusing. Not everyone likes manual aperture rings either. But it's almost like Voigtlander knew that Nikon ZF is going to happen regardless and release the set of lenses to match the camera. And as you can see, it's a perfect match. And as you say, as Voigtlander lenses, maybe not for everyone, it's similar to Nikon ZF. It may be not the camera for everyone, but if you are into old fashioned controls and dials, Voidland lens are actually a perfect match for this. For us on a personal level, we've discovered Voidland lenses about two years ago. Mm. And it was almost like a revelation for us because those lenses produce a very different look to a Nikon one. And there's almost a lens for every occasion. And as long as you have the budget to have all of them, then you can choose a specific lens for specific look you want. Good. Now we will also do our favorite picks of Nikon F mount lenses adapted to the ZF because obviously with all these fantastic manual focus features in this camera, it's almost screaming to have manual focus vintage glass put on there. So we will be doing that as well. But if there are any other tests you'd like us to do, let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, give us a like and subscribe. And if you found this video super useful, there's super things button as well.